Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Acts chapter 2, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 21. This is Pentecost Sunday, and this is what it says. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. And there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them in our own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, they're full of sweet wine. But Peter taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to the men of Judea and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it shall be that in the last days, God says that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And even upon my bond slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour forth of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. Everyone that calls on your name, Lord, may we be in that number. May we call on your name this day and in the days to come. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. My parents, for a long time, used to enjoy reading the obituaries in the newspaper. When I was young, I didn't, I, I really didn't do that very often. Uh, now, it's hard finding a newspaper. But every once in a while, I, I'll go online and start reading reading obituaries some folks I know some folks not so much came across an obituary a little while back it was December of 2019 it was a woman who lived in Chattanooga named Katie McDonald she was 80 years old when she passed away and like most obituaries the obituary talked about what a fine woman she was and what great virtues she had and uh, gave her great praise as a human being but you read down the page a little bit and and 
her children, who obviously wrote this, exposed some of her eccentricities. One paragraph says, she was preceded in death by the father of her four children, Charles, by the father of their four children, Charles Allen MacDonald, whom she loved to her dying day, and her beloved family pets, Simon the Siamese cat, Peanut the wiener dog, Sugar the howling dog, Daisy the very special, extremely important stray dog, and most notably, Jack, her darling mutt, who lost his tail in an unfortunate accident, whereupon mom saved the tail in the freezer, just in case. Well, <laughs> you never do know when a dog may need his tail again. But then it goes on to say, it says, she left behind a load of stuff her family doesn't know what to do with. And then it lists some of the items. It says, anyone interested in having these items, please wait the appropriate amount of time to reach out. Tomorrow should be fine. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's more than one or two people have had a load of stuff that their family didn't know what to do with. And I think that's, that's the nature, the nature of people, to leave behind things. Things, hopefully, that their family knows what to do with. But, you know, a dog's tail, that, that falls in the list of things. Not real quite sure what to do with it. You know, don't you hope that you've been left something a little better than a dog's tail in the freezer? I, I, hope, I hope we all are left with something a little better than that. Well, this morning I come with good news. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. That on the last night of his earthly life, Jesus let us know that he wasn't going to leave us alone. He wasn't going to leave the disciples alone. He told them to wait in Jerusalem until they were clothed with power, power from on high. And the book of Acts starts with that promise one more time. And then it's on the day of Pentecost, this day. The day that we celebrate is, is when we receive that that Jesus left us. Not a load of stuff we don't know what to do with, but the most useful things in the world. The most useful things in the world. This day of Pentecost was a day that long before Jesus came, that the, the Jews would celebrate. They called it the Feast of Weeks. Inside Jerusalem, they called it Pentecost. Outside Jerusalem, they called it the Feast of Weeks. That it was on the Feast of the Passover that they, they celebrated leaving Egypt. Moses leading them out of Egypt from the hands of Pharaoh. And it was seven weeks later that they celebrated receiving the Ten Commandments and the law. Out in the desert... And this is what they celebrated on the Feast of Weeks. This is what they celebrated. So there were people from all over the world gathered in Jerusalem. Gathered to celebrate this time in the, the, where they celebrated the, the, the giving of the Ten Commandments by God to Moses. And while they were waiting for the, the start of that celebration, it says that there came a noise like a violent rushing wind. It doesn't say, and this wind blew through. It says it was a noise like a violent rushing wind. And it didn't say, and fire came and touched. It said tongues as of fire came. And then the disciples, the Galileans, began to speak, and people from all over the world began to understand them. And they were wondering, what does this mean? And that's what they said. I mean, here are these people, that country bumpkins from Galilee, they're speaking, and they, these people from all over the world understand what they're saying. Well, first the cynics begin to speak. They said, well, I, I can tell you what's happening. They're drunk. That's what's happening. They've come here for the festival. They started the festival early, and they're drunk already. And that's when... Peter steps in, and he says, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. They're not drunk, as you suppose. That's almost implying that, you know, if it were 11 o'clock, they'd be drunk. But you know, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, and then he begins to quote from the prophet Joel. 500 years before Christ, 
Joel predicted this day would come. This day. When in the words of, of Joel, that God would, would pour His Spirit on, on all people, all people, on the, the sons and the daughters, on the young and the old, on the men and the women, on the slave and the free. Well, that's not the way it was in the Old Testament. That it was in the Old Testament that, that God would pour His Spirit, but it would be on individuals to give them a, a special, maybe power to be able to play music like no one else. Or maybe power to be mighty in battle. Or a special power to be a craftsman. To be able to make things with their hands that people would point to it and say, well, that's something only God could do. But Joel talked about a time when, when God would, would freely pour out His Spirit on all people. And Peter saying, this is that time. This is the promise of Jesus to not leave us as orphans. Now, not give us a bunch of stuff that we don't know what to do with, but to give His Spirit, His Spirit, to pour out His, His Holy Spirit on all, sons and daughters, young and old, male and female, slave and free. That you and I have been given gifts. Gifts. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. And the first gift that we've been given is, is uh, the power to see. The power to see. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says, Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered into the human heart, all that, God has prepared for those who love Him. And then in verse 12, he says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. That we might see those things that, that aren't apparent to everyone. Walter Cavett tells a story about a, a boy and his father who went camp, camping in the Adirondacks. Well, the father had hired a guide to take them deep into the woods, and for a week, the guide would, would lead them. And the boy was just intrigued and impressed by the ability of, of this guide to see in the everyday things around him a bit of nature that the boy had never noticed before, that most people had never noticed before. And that's when the little boy asked him, said, can you see God? And that's when the old man said, my boy, it's getting so I can hardly see anything else. For those who love nature, you know what I'm talking about. But God doesn't call us just to have a wonderful love of nature. God calls us to love Him with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor, to see in our neighbor the son, the daughter, to see in those around us, the young and the old, to see in those around us, male and female, to see the Spirit of God with eyes that don't see what's ordinary, not what the world sees, because we've not been given the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. It's a gift. It's power that's been given to you. This morning, my invitation is receive the power you've been given. Call on the name of the risen Christ. Did He enter into your eyes? Eyes to see. Second thing that, I, that Jesus left us was that Jesus left us the power to pray. The power to pray. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says, And in the same way the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. 
But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. That the Spirit teaches us how to pray. How to pray. Lutheran pastor Reuben Youngdahl tells a story about going to Dublin, Ireland, and he, he saw a, on a young man's desk two words, but God. And he began to think about those two words. On, and so when he got back to the United States, he he made a, a little plaque for his own desk, and all it said was, but God. He said fairly often people would come in, and some would look and, and not ask about what those two words meant, and every once in a while, someone would. They'd say, well, what does that mean, but God? And he had an opportunity to share. He said, sometimes I'm lonely. And I don't know what to pray. And so I pray. But God, but God is with me. And then I begin to pray. He said, sometimes that I, I feel insignificant and I pray, but God loves me. And then I, I know what to begin to pray. He said, sometimes I... I'm in despair, and I pray, but God, but God gives hope, and then I know what to pray. It's not the words, it's the Spirit, and you've been given the, the Spirit of God to aid you in prayer, a time, a place set aside where when we don't know what to pray, when we don't know what to do, when we don't know what to say, but God, but God does. And God is there and He leads us. And power, and power of prayer. Not just pretty words, but power. The power of prayer. You've been given power. This morning my invitation is, receive that power power of the risen Christ taking part in your prayer. And it's not only the power to see and it's not only the power to pray, it's also the, the power of peace. Dave Garraway, I understand, was the, a TV host for NBC Today show during the, the late 50s and early 60s. He was well respected and, and well loved. And he had a way with his audience. And he, uh, he was one time asked if, what his understanding of Christmas was. He said, well, I've noticed that whenever I ask people what they want for Christmas, nine out of ten times, people will, will say something material. And he said, I used to be a, amused by that. He said, but not any longer. He said, I happen to be one of those people who can afford anything he wants. But what I find, what I really want, I can't buy at all. What I really want is peace of mind. What I really want is peace of mind. What I really want is peace of soul. What I really want are the kind, is the kind of peace that you have when you really don't want anything. On the last night of his, his earthly life, Jesus said, John 14, 27, these things, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid. Peace. A peace of mind, a peace of heart. A peace where fear doesn't control us. That's a peace we can't come by on our own. It was a peace that has been given to you. This morning my invitation is receive it. Receive it. This morning... 
It may be that uh, when I mentioned that you've been given a power to see, not just to see God in nature, but in other people, that it's your eyes, your eyes that have been a stumbling block to you. It might be that there's someone, someone in your family, someone that you know that you've, you've convicted, found them guilty, and you've not been able to see anything else in them, not been able to see any good, and certainly not been able to see any grace. My invitation this morning is you've been given eyes to see. Receive sight. This morning it may be when I begin to talk about you, you've been given the power to pray that Recently, when you've been praying, your prayers have been bouncing off the ceiling, and you've been focusing more on the words than you have been the risen Christ there with you. That the power of His Spirit, it's not just given to someone else. It's been given to you. Receive. Receive His Holy Spirit. And know the peace, the peace in prayer, the peace that has strength beyond all our comprehension, and let not your hearts be troubled. Pray with me. Jesus, it was on the last night of your life that you drew the disciples together in an upper room and to them you gave bread and a cup. Not so they could just look at a bread and cup, but so they would know. So they would know that it's, it's, it's your spirit, that as they, they ate the bread, that it was your spirit as, as they drank from the cup, that it was your life that lives in our life. With power, not just memory, power. The power that raised you from the dead is available to us today. Lord, I know there are folks within the sound of my voice that have never called on that power. And it might be that their life has not known peace. Lord, breathe that peace, the peace that you give, not the way the world gives, but the peace, the way that you give. And may their hearts not be troubled. Or it might be that there are those who've not had the power to pray. God, you do. God, you have strength that we don't have. Breathe power to pray. Starting now, at this time. And, and may that result in eyes that, that see you everywhere around us, quite certainly in nature, but in people too. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. 
Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.